And welcome to the SpireMag.com VCast. Jim Copperoli, Paul Konerdyke, Spectrum Center, Charlotte, North Carolina, Michigan State, Thursday afternoon, 69-51 victory over Mississippi State, and leaving no doubt getting off to a good lead early. Withstood a couple of counter punches, but Michigan State led throughout, always had answers. Not a perfect game, but the areas in which Michigan State were impressive are areas Michigan State's been searching for that kind of satisfaction and excellence all year. Not an A-plus game, but getting in, uh, into uh, really good trends for Michigan State right now, advancing to the second round to play North Carolina. Paul, your thoughts on Michigan State today in the first round over Mississippi State? I think it was like one of those in an AP class where you have a B-plus perf- B plus grade, it gets bumped up. Uh, AP class, I wouldn't know anything about yeah, neither that. Neither would person. I, but my kids are in them, so I know. are they really mine? That's what I question all the gotcha, time. Gotcha, I know. But Michigan State played a team that can make a, a, a team that puts an A performance together look really bad. And, you know, like on the way, we've been talking all week, and I'm sure some people watching this VCast are like, what's the big deal? Mississippi State wasn't that good. And, you know, right before we went out to, to the court side, I was talking to our, our good friend Joe Rexroad, another friend Mike Wilson, both guys that cover Michigan State, and they're saying, hey, these guys really... Um, and they cover Tennessee, Tennessee now. Tennessee, but they, they said these guys really slap Tennessee around. They're way more physical than Tennessee. They're athletic, they're really long, and they, they're built like football players, and Michigan State's going to have problems with them. Now, both these guys know Michigan State, and uh, both these guys know the SEC. So when they said that, and, Joe, and neither of those guys are like susceptible to histrionics I'm like okay Michigan State's really gonna have a problem and I was wondering is this gonna be a game like we saw the other night with uh shoot I can't remember who it was that played Colorado State oh Virginia where maybe the team isn't as bad offensively as it appears on on film and uh in Michigan State are they gonna look bad in this game because of what Mississippi State does well but I'll say Michigan State had probably its best most complete game when you talk about checking all the boxes off, they played good defense, they rebounded, and at least early on, or for most of the game, they didn't get sped up, they ran their stuff, uh, and they got good shots. There's a couple times where, you know, you, there was a little bit of hero ball and it worked, but for the most part, Michigan State ran their, you know, ran their, their offense and they got the shots they wanted. Uh, whether they took them all the time it wasn't always the case. You know, Malik Hall was open a lot in the corner and didn't, passed up some shots, but Michigan State did really good to get open shots, and a lot of different guys contributed in a lot of different ways. Great game for Michigan State. You know what Michigan State reminded me of a little bit? I mean, the way Michigan State, they knew and they respected Mississippi State's size, physicality, defense, all those things. So Michigan State put great emphasis, as they always do, on we have to match their toughness. And they've been doing that against Purdue twice in the last three weeks, which was really good sparring partner to get ready for this game. And Michigan State came out all five guys on the field, no matter on the court or field, whatever you want to call it, no matter who is in the game, quickness, defense, on the same page, in the gaps, on number 13, in the gaps, playing as one, five men on a string, doing it with, with urgency and physicality, first to contact on the boards, right. first with, with defense, and then getting it and going. There's an, an urgency and a quickness about it, along with the skill. You know what that reminded me of? That reminded me of when you used to play Duke. That's the crap Duke used to do to teams, including Michigan State. When you get out there and you're like, holy crap, this is a different level. Mississippi State is physical and all those things. Early in that game, they're like, man, this team has their crap together. This is a different level. And Michigan State's been doing it and doing it and doing it. When you talk about a program win, this win doesn't make the program. But the program came to the forefront today, and they and they kicked it all over Mississippi State. It was it was something to watch. You said about the, the, the whole program thing? They had a graphic up in the, in the stadium where it showed like number of wins that Michigan State as a program has had in the NCAA tournament. And then they showed Mississippi State and it was something like 74, uh, you know, wins that Michigan State historically has had in the NCAA tournament. Mississippi State had 11. Now at that point, Michigan State was held at 18 to 10, had a, had a, I'm sorry, they had a 10, 10 board advantage over Mississippi State. And they didn't, at the end, Mississippi State, you know, clawed back into it and was a little bit more physical down, down the stretch. But Michigan State, Played at a level that we've seen on occasion in terms of like physicality, but not on a consistent basis. And you talk about them coming out, uh, you know, focused into everything. It, the, the, it's the closest. That first eight minutes was the closest I've seen replicated to what they did against Baylor, yeah. where where it was absolutely we have to have this win. Um, you know, we need to make a, a statement, and everybody that played was on on the same page. Now more guys played in this game and they played in that Baylor game. Uh, you know, well, 
play bigger roles and for longer minutes. But so collectively, maybe this was more impressive than the than the Baylor game. But in terms of executing what they do on what they do on offense, in terms of executing and being on their scouting reports on, on defense, this is the closest Michigan State, in my opinion, has come uh, to the Baylor game, and they needed to be like that because you just can't you you've got to do what they did early, otherwise a team like. Mississippi State, they can maul oh, you always. to death. They're, they're, and they can do that. They can shoot. They can they can have those runs on you. Michigan State withstood that. The other thing about, thing about Baylor, Michigan State, of course, was urgent, needed to win that game. But also Michigan State had a lot of respect for the opponent against Baylor, had respect for these guys, and that helps them dial in a little bit more. What it reminded me of, Michigan State, as a number 7 or number 10 seed back in 2003, they played Colorado, coached by Ricardo Patton at the time, and they, you know, Colorado may not have respected Michigan State's transition game as much. Michigan State came out and won by about 19, and the next day they were playing Florida in Florida. Now, Florida was a two seed as opposed to North Carolina being a one seed, but it's similar in terms of an 0-3 team that was taking forever to get going. That was the year of Lord Beck and Paul Davis as right. freshman and all those things. And we've compared this season to 0-3 a number of times this year. And now in the first round against a major conference opponent, first round looks a lot like 0-3. Yeah, but I, Second round, they're getting North Carolina as opposed to the Billy Donovan Florida Gators. But there's a chance that might look like 0-3 also. Yeah, but I, I still, you know, I, I agree that there's some the parallels, but I still think going back to the Colorado team with Ricardo Patton, that was a little bit looser. Yeah, and that was. was a, that yeah, was they a, were not they, nearly as they tough as this. They weren't defensively. I mean, Mississippi State today played pretty good defense, and they tried some different things. And Michigan State just out executed it, and you know out outperformed. And then there were several instances where a guy like Jaden Akins would hustle, uh, you know, maybe maybe Jackson Cole or maybe like Monty Sissoko, and get second chance points, and not only get second chance opportunities, but convert those opportunities. Yeah, and that's something that Michigan State. In a lot of games this year, they've gotten second chance opportunities, but have not been able to convert them. They did a nice job, um, you know, in this game, whether it was Jay Nakins hitting threes or, uh, you know, Trey Holloman and getting that big three after a, one of the biggest offensive rebounds in Monty Sissoko's career. Um, Michigan State did a lot of good things and they took advantage of their opportunities on a consistent basis. And like you were, you were saying earlier, every time that Mississippi State looked like they're on the verge of making a run, Michigan State was able to punch back. You know, early on they had this, Mississippi State had this 7-0 run. It, it turned a 14 or 12-point lead into a 5-point lead, and Michigan State found a found a counter to that. And, uh, and it, it shows me that the lessons that they've t had when they're being battle battle tested. I mean, they've been punching up in the mouth where where they know how to punch back, and uh, and there's no doubt on that. And there was no panic. There was no. A shrinkage or whatever you want to call it. Michigan State, you know, had, a, had an answer for everything that it was thrown at them today. They did. Hey, give us a like to the channel here. Subscribe to the channel. Go to SpartanMag.com for all your coverage of Michigan State basketball, NCAA tournament, and spring football. You know, Michigan State, they had, when they had that 20, the, the lead was cut to 2015, five-point lead. Michigan State added back onto it, made it seven. And at one point, it was six points with about 15 minutes to go. And they had a steal going in for a layup, and that's when Aikens came from behind and yeah. blocked that shot. If they would have cut it to four, that would have been the, the, the smallest deficit that Michigan State would have had, going all the way back to like eight to four or, or six to two in the early going. Um, that blocked shot, uh, great hustle by Aikens and awareness, great athletic play to make it happen. It was clean, and then his elbow hit him in the back of the head as he landed. You could possibly have called, you, you could, should have called a foul, but the refs aren't really looking for what happens after a play a lot. But Hubbard took a shot in the back of the head, went out for a couple of minutes. But that play right there helped Michigan State restore order and get things, and, and before you knew it, it was back right. to eight or nine right away. That block shot was so important. Yeah, and then you had another one right before half, with, with, with before that first half where it looked, it looked like they were going to, you know, get one. They were at, Mississippi State was going to get momentum going in the locker room, and Malik Hall has a drive and a score right at at the buzzer. Did Is I say it, Malik Hall or Jay Nakins? I meant Jay Nakins. Nakins yeah. had that block for behind on Hubbard yeah, and, and with the elbow in the back Aikens of the head. Was awesome today. It, you I look think at, I said Hall. Sorry. No, you didn't. It, you look at you look at what Jay Nakins did today. Everyone talks about you know him making shots, and he tied for the team lead today with three three pointers. Good for him. Congratulations. But Jay Nakins also, if you look at like those intangible plays that matter, you know, that are bigger than than the result. Uh, he was all over the place. Whether it was like saving rebounds, um, you know, some of those some of those second chance rebounds where he's like just ranging for rebounds. Um, the dunk that he had, that transition dunk, that that was huge. You know, they were they were hanging around then, and that's a play that he's been yelled at for trying to make and missing earlier this year. In a couple of games, 
you know, Jaden Akins has tried to drive baseline and dunk, has missed it. Izzo has pulled him out of a game and screamed at him. In this game, he drives baseline and dunks. One of Got the best dunks down. I've ever seen. And, but that's a huge play. That's a, that's one of those things that it's bigger than the points that he scores. And Aikens had about four or five of those kind of plays today, uh, you know, scrapping for, you know, for everything. And, mm-hmm. and and that's what he can do. And he's bigger than the points that he scores. They've been trying to get that from him for a long time, and he's wanted to get it done. He's been shooting all week in practice. Today made that early one. Ends up three out of eight from three-point range. Seven rebounds. Seven rebounds. Uh, the only time Izzo was mad at him was when that one time when he tried to finish that alley-oop one-handed, and that would have been majestic. But Izzo just wanted the deuce, and Izzo gave him some. Izzo had the knee. Right. And it, and it turns out Mississippi State didn't score at the other end, but that won't go on the on the Christmas card list. But Aikens was just feeling it, and they are a different team when he's shooting 40% from three, playing defense like right. that, rebounding like that. They're a different team. Yeah, when he's when he's all around, Jaden Aikens. They're a completely different team. And uh, Tyson Walker, creative today, 19 points, 7 of 12 from the field, 3 of 6 from three-point range. A lot of attention to Aikens, and deservedly so, but Walker was back to being the Walker, you know, the preseason type Walker. The groin looks fine. Also on, on defense with him against Hubbard. Now, Hubbard scored his points, but he had to work for him, and he had to work like hell to get open, and Walker was denying passing lanes when he could, slaloming around screens when he could, getting on them when he could. You know, forced up some a lot of misses, but his defensive movement for Walker looked good. Hubbard got some points, but he moved on defense, which is something else this team hasn't had all year or in recent weeks, increasingly more lately. But you're going to need that against R.J. Davis. Okay. That Tyson Walker on defense, six foot against six foot, a couple guys from New York. R.J. Davis is great, first team All American. But Walker's going to be there to play some defense yeah, on him. And he, he played 30, 34 minutes in this game, and I think that's manageable for him. You know, as long as he didn't, and, and he didn't take any shots that would make him, uh, you know, re-injure the, the groin injury. What, what I what I enjoyed about Tyson Walker today is he scored the 16 points, but he's very he was efficient in doing it. And there's a lot of times where he had potential shots that he passed up and got it to someone, and they made and they made it they made it count. I thought I thought Walker was. I know Hubbard makes some really tough shots, but Walker had a little extra bounce and, and got him out of his comfort zone. I mean, he took quick shots, but they were not good shots. And uh, kudos to him. All right. We'll talk about North Carolina tomorrow. North Carolina's got a point guard freshman named Elliot Cadeau. Not much of a shooter, but he really makes the offense go. He's a nice little point guard. You know what I say about that? A.J. Hogard. Mm-hmm. You said last night this is a matchup that you like. I'm just saying. All right, so um, Michigan State comes through. They're feeling good about themselves. Got some traction. Harness some m- momentum. But like you, you saw them in the locker room, they're not. They're not excited about it. Well, how would you describe it? I, business. Business. You no, know, I, I wouldn't say that. I would say it's. I, I would say. I wouldn't say it's an ultimatum. But I'm saying it, their their approach is something that I think has been dictated or talked about consistently and going back to practice this week it's not about mississippi state it's about michigan state and what we're going to do this weekend i i tried to talk to like jackson kohler about some developmental stuff try to talk to some other guys they didn't want to talk it was like one word answers tyson walker was summed it up with you know we we ain't done nothing yet uh paraphrasing that and uh they're here to win the weekend uh Izzo talked about it and they've already like started doing prep for, for north carolina but this is probably as uh focused as I've seen the Michigan State team in the locker room after an NCAA tournament win, really? uh, you know, not not you know, no one's like on their cell phone getting text messages from family. Uh, they're not talking about not talking about what they they did against Mississippi State. Not talking about how well they played and that they proved something. Uh, they haven't proved anything. Uh, they've got a they got a big game coming up, and I got to tell you, some of the North Carolina fans that showed up to this thing early, they were there with you know bringing their kids out or whatever. Um, you know, I'm kind of social once in a while, and I was talking to some guys, and they don't want to play Michigan State. You know, so the, the North Carolina fans I talked to are rooting for Mississippi State because they're scared of Michigan State. That version of Michigan State that played out there today can be anybody. They're not a nine seed. Right. I know they are a nine seed. They deserve a nine seed. 
but that's a tough second round opponent for a number one seed. But that's what the tournament has become. I mean, in terms yeah. of like, like the last ten years. Uh, and North Carolina is good. I mean, last uh, the last game of the regular season at Duke, yeah. that version of North Carolina can beat anybody. Exactly. Now, can they harness that? We'll have to wait and see. Uh, Michigan State getting some progress at the center position just in time. Because Baycott is a horse, Harrison Ingram's a yeah, horse. So, so my biggest my biggest issue in that North Carolina game, the officials let Michigan State and Mississippi State play. Yeah. You know, and so if it was like if, if it's a game that's officiated like this one was, I like I like Michigan State's chances. I think it's going to be a close game. But you you just wonder when you're playing in someone's backyard. We've seen some of the the games against Duke in the past where. You know, you feel like Michigan State is right there with them, has a chance to be to it to the end, but are they getting some calls? You know, is Michigan State, is, is a Tyson Walker in foul trouble? Is it A.J. Hogart in foul trouble? That type of thing. Um, you know, you got to be, I'm a little bit concerned about that playing in North Carolina's backyard. All right, it's going to be, we'll talk more about the Carolina game tomorrow. As far as the centers go, Sissoko comes off the bench, team high, nine rebounds. Sissoko plays about 17 minutes. He played more minutes than Carson Cooper. Cooper's the starter. But Sissoko, is he getting comfortable with being the big man off the bench? Uh, for that role, I think that's really good for him and this team. This is no different than his performance against Baylor. You know, like when he came out and he was emotional afterwards. I talked to him in the locker room after that Baylor game. My job is to rebound. He knows what his job is. He's answering the, the challenge of that. And these type of teams, when it's just when it's a deal where you're going up against a guy that's physical and you have to, you have to bring it, He's perfect for this game, but but those nine rebounds, yeah, that's big, but you look at, I go back to the offensive rebound where he just took it off the rim between two Mississippi State dudes that are big and strong, and the ball goes out to Trey Holloman. Those are the kind of plays that are, you know, winning plays, and against this team, he could do it. I think he is embracing his role, back to what you said, but when it comes to physicality, they need Amani Sissoko at certain junctures in the game. I thought Carson Cooper did just fine today, um, you know, starting out. And I think I think he's good, but against physical teams, you've got to have a guy, you know, that can get boards. And you Michigan bring him State off the bench, that, fresh. Yeah, yeah. and you don't have to set the tone. And that's one of those things where if you bring him off the bench, going back to Tom Izzo's theory, is you're less likely to get those early foul calls Absolutely. where people are looking at Absolutely. where your arm is in relation to where, where the, the other center is. Because officials are, st- are trying to set a tone early right. also. And Sissoko so often will get a foul in the first 30 seconds of a lot of games. Right. So because he's trying to set a tone as well. He's trying to show, hey, I'm physical. And, and this, it's different. You can go in there. And, and I thought he was really big because I was wondering what would happen, um, you know, with the different size centers that they had today. You know, they've got a really big one in the, in the Bell Jr. kid from Saginaw. And then, you know, obviously Tolu Smith. I thought Michigan State really shut him down for the most part. Yeah. Tolu Smith until maybe the second half when they had some dunks. But Carson Cooper kind of set the tone in that early. That link that Carson Cooper had, uh, you know, kind of made Tolu Smith not want to shoot it. Yeah. And uh, when Mississippi State missed shots early on in the game, one of their strengths is offensive rebounding at about 40% for the season. Michigan State's rebounding has been reawakening here in the last two or three weeks. And when they were missing shots, Michigan State was clearing the glass and running early. Right. Talk about a tone setter. That was big. Could Michigan State stop them? Okay, maybe. Now could they get a defensive yeah. rebound? And once they could, they could run. That was great, the defensive rebounding. Cooper had a lot to do with that. Sissoko had a lot to do with the, that. The defensive rebounding piece is why Michigan State held them to 37.5%. Absolutely. And, and you look at some of the other games that Michigan State has had deep. It has had and it, that Izzo didn't like the defense. A lot of those games were were uh, defensive possessions where initially you got to stop, but you know they, they couldn't clear the defensive glass. Maybe it goes out of bounds off them, and then someone's right in a, running a sideline or a baseline out of bounds play for a good bucket, and, and then you see those shooting percentages go up. So if Michigan State can rebound the ball, not only can they run transition wise, but it also really take some pressure off your defense. And Sissoko, you know, he was he only played one minute against Minnesota in the first round of the Big Ten tournament. Then he played he played really well against Purdue, and that you got him back into the good graces a little bit. Um, today and in other games recently, Kohler has been the first big man off the bench. Now Booker started at Indiana. So that thing's been a revolving door trying to find the right way to do it. Then they started Cooper in the Big Ten tournament. Not that he's the best center, but he's a good starter. Like in the Major League Baseball, sometimes you just, a guy's a starter. Go and give us three innings type of guy. Maybe not a guy that's going to go seven or eight innings, and you know that. Cooper might not be your finisher, so a lot of times he is. But 
starting Cooper allows you to get a good rotation in terms between him and Hall. Because if you start Booker like you did against Indiana, then you got both your power forwards on the on the court at the same time. Then who comes in later? Then you end up playing Mahal too many minutes. That didn't work. And you're not gonna. Uh, you talk about the offense. It would have been a bloodbath. Oh, offensive today? rebounding. Yeah. So you couldn't you couldn't start Booker against these guys. So you start Cooper. You don't have Sissoko getting in there and getting a foul in the first 30 seconds. Cooper helps set the tone. He's playing some defense. Then you bring Sissoko in instead of Kohler because Kohler was the first center off the bench against Minnesota. Not anymore. Matty has re-earned that role. He's playing more minutes, but as a reliever, and, for, and that's the first time they've done that all year where, where Sissoko is the reliever, but uh, playing more minutes as the second guy, and, uh, and, and you still have Kohler in there. And it's, it's late, but... I like it. Yeah, and it also it also is a re-emphasis to Jackson Kohler that when you go in there, you have to rebound. And he did get two offensive boards in right. this game. But, I mean, you see Sissoko doing what he did on the glass, and Jackson re Jackson Kohler, it's not just a, I'm in there because I can score better than all these guys, and I'm the only chance to, chance to score. It's a, I have to do my job uh, and, and play not only as a rebounder, but also score. So. And I like the 15-footer that Kohler took. He can make that shot. He didn't miss it. He didn't make it today, but I like he can do that. That's a piece that's been missing, and, and the reason it's been missing is the injury that he had coming into the season because, like, we saw I don't. You and I both don't put much stock in money ball and stuff like that, but I do, I do think you can put some stock into a couple of things. If a guy shows a 15-footer and consistently at, at money ball, then he, can then he can do it in the game. We saw it with Xavier Tillman. That, that, that's a different kind of piece. It opens up some things for Michigan State, and uh, I'm glad he made that because it gives him some confidence moving forward. He missed it today, though. Did he miss it? He missed it. Okay. But it looked good. But yeah. I like that shot. Um, he can still offer a lot. Uh, you got to keep him in it because you're going to need everybody against North Carolina. North Carolina is good. and uh, But they've got seven losses, which is more than a number one seed often has. And now it's Hubert Davis against Izzo. You're going to favor Izzo in that for sure. Um, and Izzo said in the locker room, outside the locker room in the hallway, they've put a lot of work into Carolina already. And of yeah. course, we talked about Wojcik. said that more so than usual. I mean, yeah. you know, a lot of times when Izzo talks about winning the weekend, it's kind of like the comments are caged. It's kind of like they don't want to disrespect the team that they played by saying, hey, we worked on Carolina. But his comments today were a little bit different where I think he let it slip a little bit that they really worked on Carolina. And they didn't work at all on Wagner or who well, do they I, play? Or, I, well, who, or Wagner. Wagner was playing North, North Carolina. Carolina. So, and they didn't know if it was going to be North, Wagner until two days ago because right. they were in the, in the first, first four. So Izzo said, in all fairness, they didn't put any, any time into Wagner. Right. So they've put more time into the next opponent than usual. Wojcik's been watching them all year anyway because it's some place for the team. Sometimes that doesn't help if the other team is just more ultra-talented than you are. Right. And if Baycott and Davis are great, it might not make a difference. But any little edge in there that the coaching staff can have, it will go in Michigan State's yeah. favor. They've got that going for them. And the, the one thing I would be paying attention to, we've talked about transition a lot in, in relation to Mississippi State. I was really impressed, for the most part, how Mississippi State got back They put uh, very, uh, on defense. They did. I, I feel, I think that Mississippi State got back in a fashion that I would be surprised to see North Carolina get back. North Carolina will like trade with it because North Carolina can really get it and yeah, go I also. Know, I, know they'll, they, they'll get, I know they can, but I do feel like Michigan State might have more opportunities to score in transition. Now, like you said, they'll have to get back. It's not like it, it's not like it favors one team and not the other. But I was really impressed with how hard Mississippi State fought to get back. And, uh, you know, it, what, the best – transition looks that Michigan State got were based on off of like defense and steals not on rebounding and running now Michigan State tried to and uh, and I think it helps but the fact that Michigan State played as well as they did shot 50 percent in this game and not and without with getting just 10 points in transition that's pretty impressive I think there's more out there yeah the, the, the only thing that Michigan State did not do well today was 16 turnovers credit to Mississippi State they're very good at forcing turnovers so Michigan State uh, not perfect today, but they feel good about themselves as they should, and there's more to aspire to from this point. North Carolina, they'll get in and go too, and the like Cormac Henry in the corner in transition, just like Michigan State hits, you know, Ty Walker in the corner in transition. Will they go up and down? We'll talk more about that tomorrow. It's going to be, it's two Blue Bloods in the second round, Michigan State and North Carolina, and it's going to be a good one. Anything else, Paul? Nope. For Paul Konerdyke, my name is Jim Comper. I've been watching the VCast from the, what's this called? Spectrum, Spectrum Center. Center. Spectrum Center. In Charlotte, North Carolina, NCAA tournament, the VCast, SpartanMag.com.